Hi guys, Scotty here. I'm um, putting together a bunch of brood frames uh, over the next couple days, I guess. I'm going to do about 300 of them. Um, I do have another video that I go into a whole lot more detail of how I go about it, so I'm going to kind of go through this kind of quick. I've never showed you how I wax them, so I'm going to try and throw that at the end of this. Um, if you've looked close at my brood frames, you probably noticed I do have four communication holes. These things do come with... Uh, a little spot here where you can you can break that out but I I have a jig and I actually cut all four and then I drill a hole I'll show you how I do it and but if you're really interested you can go back and watch one of the other videos I explain a lot more detail of of why I do it the way I do it um, I simply have a little box made up here the saw comes down and, and catches the corner I can grab about 10 or 12 of them at a time just push it in you definitely want uh, headphones and, and eye protector. These little pieces of plastic go flying all over the place, but this is fast, this is easy. Then you just flip it over, turn it around, whatever. Get all four corners. Just make sure you push it in. And that's that. I've actually already done a full box while I was waiting for the furnace to shut off. And it's probably going to take me about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll show you how I drill the hole. So hang on. All right, so I got all the corners cut off the, the frames. And now I want to drill this hole in the center. And again, I've got another little jig made up. It's nothing too fancy. It's really just um, a three-sided little box. Um, on the other jig, 10, 12 frames doesn't really matter. This one here... Five seems to work out best. I guess maybe if I'd made these sides a little higher, but whatever. Five works pretty good, so I just count off five, stack them up. Now, I do have a another piece of wood underneath. Uh, I was actually drilling through, damaging my table. But these five go in here, and then this block of wood uh, has a hole. That's just a guide, so that I get them all in the same spot, and that just sits in and pushes up. And then uh, glasses, headphone. Uh, inch and a half hole saw. This is a new one. Um, the one I used before was just a regular type hole saw and it was just a little trickier to get the, the discs out. I bought this one. Uh, somebody had recommended this to me and I'm sorry, I don't remember who, but fantastic little thing. They, it does catch quite a bit, but it's nothing too outrageous. Then the nice thing with this one is that is the saw comes off the, the drill bit. Okay, this time the drill came right out, but um, the pieces come out of there reasonably, reasonably well, of course. Now this one's not going to because I'm filming. Normally the drill bit stays. It's only come out on me a couple of times, actually. And then the saw piece just goes back on. Then I just take that off. I don't know if the camera sees it. I got a cardboard box. I'm dumping all the junk in. And I just take this and I, I bang these to get all the drillings out. Put them in the stack, two, three, four, get five more, put that back on. Battery's getting low. Yeah, that's the way it normally comes out. Put that back on, and we're ready to go to the next one. So I got a couple hundred more to get done. I'll get that done and then we'll put some frames together. So stay tuned, I'll bring you back. Battery gave out of my cordless drill and I couldn't find one that was charged up. So I had to switch to this, uh, I don't know, it was a medieval device, whatever that thing is, but it took me a while to figure out how to use it. But it does have more power and it is going faster. So I guess it's, in the end, it's a good thing. I'm actually able to do six with it and um, getting them out with the screwdriver is a little easier. Just grab a stack. I can tell, you don't have to count them, I can just see how many I have. Put my guide jig in. And there's a little hole now in the bottom, so when I drop through I know I'm there. I'm not taking it out anymore, it's actually faster just to, to do that. Set this aside. Again, knock it on this cardboard box here. Alright, that's 300 frames. 
I'm going to pluck the wall. I've been out here about an uh, hour and a half to cut all the corners, drill the holes. I'll clean this mess. I'm going to go have some lunch. And then I'll come clean this mess up and then uh, we'll get to the fun part, putting some frames together. Anybody have an idea what I can do with 300 plastic washers? <laughs> See you in a bit. All right guys, I've got uh, most of these frames all put together. I don't have the foundation in yet. I'll do that tomorrow. But I'm on my last 10. Hopefully I don't screw up because I've only got 10 left. No second takes. Um, I've got one of these little jigs. I bought this one from uh, Walter Kelly, I believe it was, a long time ago. Not paying me to say that. I just, this is where I bought it. I love it. It's got these two, two little boards. The bottom end is round and it slides down in here. And then it's got these two pieces here that are on these springs. All you do, and this thing works for uh, deeps and mediums. I, I've never tried it with anything else, but that's all I use. So the, the frames I have, they're from Man Lake. Again, they're not paying me to say that. I love these frames. Um, I've said this before, the, the top edge here where your, where your top bar is going to go down into and where the bottom bar is going to go into, um, they've got that beveled off at a 45 degree angle. That's, I mean, and they're so nice. There's no burrs. They're, they're just gorgeous frames. So all you do, um, the sidebars, of course, the wide piece goes to the top. You just carefully stand in 10 there. And they sit loose at first, but that, that's fine. Stand those in there like that. And then take my last 10 and stand them in on this side. And then these pieces are on the side. There's like a, a cloth here or whatever. It just helps to, if, if things aren't lined up just perfect, it just, it just makes a little wee bit of a cushion in there. And you flip that. So now they're, they're actually all, they're held. I just make sure they're down. My trusty, trusty Tight Bond 3. I love this glue as well. Not saying me to say it, or pay me to say it. <laughs> Putting a little bit too much of this. I need a new glue bottle. This one's getting pretty chewed up. It was plugged up and I took a pair of side cutters and made it a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but I just want to get this finished. Okay. Then you take your, your top bar, of course, groove, groove, that's where your foundation is going to go. That has to go down. And I just wiggle that in there and wiggle it in there. Some of them are a little snug, but most of them just press down in there without too much trouble. And what I like to do with these, I take a mallet, I I, I rest my hand and my forearm on here to stop it from bouncing, but I just like to take the hammer and just you don't have to hit it hard, just tap. If you hit it too hard, they bounce right back out. Just to make sure they're seated and air protector. Ear, ear protector. <laughs> Getting tired. I've got an air stapler. I have, um, I think these are one inch. Yeah, one inch or 25 millimeter staples in here. It's just a bit of a trick. To make sure that you're lined up and to make sure that the gun isn't on a, a silly angle, that's all. You know, a lot of guys like to nail them. Knock your socks off. I'll take the stapler. Need another table. I'm using a table saw. When you push that down. Make sure these again. Little W. -loop. And then the bottom bar, same thing. The groove. The groove for the foundation, of course, has to be pointing down. Down when it's here. Up when it's flipped over, of course. To the inside, I guess.
These ones, sometimes I'll take the hammer and top them, but I find those ones, I find that those ones tend to go down pretty good. Same thing, just make sure you're shooting straight. If you don't hold it down tight, it bounces and you put in two. And this one come out the side, so I've got to fix that. That's about the only drawback of the um, air stapler. And I am getting tired. So yeah, you got to hold it, hold it down tight. Then all you do with this contraption is you flip these back up like that. You can see that, okay? Get them up on, up on the side. <laughs> If you don't try to show the camera, it works really, really good. And I just push it forward, because I'm going to put them in that box, and then you just lift off this whole rig, okay, and there's those slots for those two boards. They stay in there. You flip this back over. Make sure you flip it back over. My, my wife did it once. I don't know how she did it. She left it upside down, and can't get the frames out. So this comes back out, and the two curved pieces here on the bottom, they go in first, down, and this is now ready to reload. So I just take these, I'm gonna to have to fix that one wherever it was, but I'm not doing that right now. Don't worry about that when I'm putting the foundation in. Now I have put the foundation in, same day, but sometimes that staple maybe doesn't hold as good as it would. Maybe the nails are better. But once that, there's the one. Once the, uh, once the glue is dry, they're not coming apart. So yeah, when I, get, when I get one that sticks out like that, I'll just grab it with a pair of pliers and peel it out of there. Not the end of the world. There's still one in there. So there we are. I got 27 boxes full there and three boxes full there. So tomorrow we'll put the foundation in that and then maybe I'll show you how I wax them. So I'm going for coffee. Oh, it's three o'clock. So time that I get back out here. About quarter after 12, I think I started. So no speed record for sure, but you know, this is just a, a very enjoyable job actually. I've had the tunes going all afternoon here. Um, I really enjoy doing this. So yeah, it's uh, it takes a little time, I guess, but it is good fun. So anyway, I'm going for coffee, get something to eat, and then I'll come back out here tomorrow and we'll put those the foundation in. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, it's time to put the, the foundation into the frame. So I just did this one, get it on my way. So all I do is grab a box. Um, this, of course, has all the, the frames we put together yesterday. Glue's all dry now. So I just take the box and I flip it upside down. Of course, you got to flip reasonably quick. Sometimes, sometimes you got to jiggle it back and forth. The idea is to try and get them uh, standing up. And nine out of ten times, when you lift that off, okay, that was the one. <laughs> and you can push them. Get them out of your way. I just take the foundation. These are now upside down. So I'm putting the foundation into the bottom of the top bar. I put it in this way and then I bring it up. Now it's resting against uh, the bottom bar. And then I just about spaced like that. I just kind of rest it against the table and then I just push it in with my two thumbs and it just pops in. When it's in correctly, it'll move. If, it, if it's not moving, it's jammed. You've got something wrong. Not real difficult. The biggest thing is to learn to not push it too far. If you push it too far, then you gotta, not a big deal. You just gotta wiggle it a little wee bit. So, not, it's not a difficult job for sure. So that one there, I went too far. So then I had to, I had to bring it back. That's where I was finding that sometimes my staples maybe didn't, didn't hold, so perhaps the, the nails could be better in that situation, but the staples are so much faster, and once the glue is dry, they're not coming apart. That glue is stronger than any staple or nail is ever going to be, as, as far as I'm concerned. Again, just a little too far. That one I had to wiggle quite a bit to get it in there. But. And there we are, 10 more. Yeah, another half hour, 40 minutes, I'll probably be done, whatever. I'll bring you back. 
All right, guys, I got all the foundation put in. I'm getting ready to put the beeswax onto the, uh, to the plastic foundation. Um, but before I go too far, I should say that this isn't intended to be a how-to video. This is just how I do it. Um, but having said that, if, if I can teach some of you younger guys some valuable life lessons, do not use your wife's favorite pasta pot to melt beeswax in. Okay, don't do that. Um, having said that, this isn't her favorite pasta pot. The new one that I bought her is her favorite pasta pot. <laughs> hey, hey, what's, the, what's the most enduring quality in a good wife? Tolerance. All right, so I did have it on high. I actually, I, what I do too, this pot has a, probably about two inches of water in the bottom. Of course, the beeswax floats. I did have it rolling. I've since turned it down a little bit. Um, yeah, I've tried a couple of different things. The thing I seem to, I like the most are these foam, these foam paint brushes. I've stopped for a few minutes and uh, the wax that's on here will harden. So if you do take a break, when you come back, you do have to kind of dip it in and get it rewarmed again. Um, so why am I waxing these frames? Well, you can buy the foundation with wax on, but I've read plenty of places that uh, they say the worldwide supply of bee wax is all contaminated with miticides and other nasty chemicals, I guess. So this wax is my wax. This is wax for my cappings, so I know it's clean. Um, they are a little bit less expensive, I guess, to buy them unwaxed, but you certainly can buy them waxed. It's no big deal. Um, I did buy them waxed once, several years ago, I guess, and the, the amount of wax they had on them was very little. It didn't really seem to help. I see in the catalogs now, I think they have medium wax, heavy wax or something like that. I've never tried those ones. Maybe they're fine. But anyway, th I don't mind doing this. This is a nice little job. Um, safety crap. <laughs> Melted beeswax is extremely hot. It will burn you. Um, this is definitely not a job to be doing with little kids or pets running around. There's a cord running behind there. It'd be a bad day if uh, a dog or a kid or something rather pulled that. that. That'd be just a bad day. I'm also not one to worry too much about safety crap. As if you watch my channel, you probably know that. But this is a job that maybe, maybe long sleeves is not out of line. So anyway, I get this thing softened up again. I'm just checking it on the side of the pot. Then I do take it out and I let it drip for five or so seconds. If if you go too soon, it's too hot. It actually does warp the plastic a little bit. And then I just take it and see the, the brush is actually still still just a little bit a uh, little bit hard. I'm going to try and get a close up here in a second. But right now the brush isn't working as good as it can. The other thing I've noticed these brushes really aren't at least the ones I'm getting aren't super good quality. And that little communication hole I have in the center there. You do have to be careful or start down. I got a couple of them here, but you uh, not very long and your brush is wrecked. So you got to kind of go. And that's all I do. Grab the next one. Dip that for a second. Um, when it is boiling, you have to watch too. Sometimes in the middle of the pot, the water is coming up in the center. So you got to you got to dip it near the edge. Checking out my close up camera here. See how that's working. That's about all I'm trying to do. Could go heavier, I suppose. I don't think it's, I don't really think it's necessary. This is about all I ever do. And the bees draw this out quite quick, actually. And again, if you don't get it to all the corners, it's not the end of the, the end of the world. Now with this communication hole I have here, I am getting wax on the table. Oh, another thing I do, I have a piece of carpet, um, just a scrap piece of carpet sitting on the floor. I've noticed, I've noticed in the past that I end up getting a little bit of wax on the floor. Boy, oh boy, it gets slippery. Um, the communication hole. A lot of you, if you haven't watched any of my old videos, you're probably wondering about that. Um, I am going to link, leave a link to the original video. Um, I have another video where I made about these frames and I explain a little bit better about that communication hole. But essentially it's just an idea that, and I've only ever managed to get it done once. You go in the fall and open that communication hole up. Because of course, they're going to build wax in that and, and fill that right over. My Hot, hot plates kicking back in. Um, I do find that quite a number of the colonies close that over most of the way, but they do 
they do keep it open uh, and they can run back and forth. But the idea of it was is in, the, in the fall, after the honey flow stops, they won't, of course, be drawing wax then, to go through with a, just a, a knife and, and open that up so that in the winter time, when all these frames are together and they make a cluster of bees in there, they don't have to go up top and over underneath, they could go through. I did it once and I didn't really see a huge improvement. I had read, I think actually it was Miller, beekeeper way back in the day, and he talked about doing it in the fall. And it, to me, it makes sense. I do intend to try it again. So that's why I have that there. Um, we're adding wax just so that the, the bees, if you don't have wax on these plastic foundation, the bees are extremely slow to draw it. So that's why I do that. I have a list here of things I want to talk about. Um, while I'm doing this. The thing I wanted to mention is I noticed last night that my, my channel actually passed 6,000 subscribers. I am really impressed. Thank you very much. My wife is baffled. She can't understand why so many people want to listen to me talk, but I do thank you. I, I really do. It's, it's, it is quite something. So that's a uh, thank you. Um, what else do I want to talk about? 6,000 subscribers. Some of you are clearly new. Um, for those of you that don't, don't know, my wife and I own and operate a commercial greenhouse here. And in about two weeks, I have to go back to work. I've basically been on holiday since last July, guys. It's, it's not such a bad gig. But uh, yeah, we're about to turn the heat back on in the greenhouse. Uh, we grow, most of what we grow from plugs, uh, baby plants. We buy a tray in that'll have anywhere from 100 to, depending on the species of plant, I think up to 512 little plants. And then uh, we transplant that and grow it. We plant all our own hanging baskets and planter pots. But anyway, I work seven days a week, starting in about two weeks, for the next four months. And some days, 15, 16 hour days. Not complaining. It's just simply what I do. So, um, I have three more videos from last summer that I do have edited and I intend to upload shortly. And then that's likely going to be it for a while. Um, this putting the feeder jars on I did the other day. I'm going to try right before I get going with the greenhouse, try and do an update on that. Um, I will certainly be doing some sort of an update uh, on the nukes upstairs. nukes upstairs when I when I bring them down but yeah there isn't gonna be a whole lot um, coming out now I do have a couple of very serious questions that I'd like to ask you guys I want your opinion and advice on something I'm gonna try this summer but I think I, think I want to get this finished and then I'll bring you back when I get these done and we'll talk about what I plan to do with these frames this summer. Um, so yeah, give me a little bit, get this done and uh, we'll have a chat. All right guys, I'm all done. I've got all my, uh, all my new frames all waxed up and uh, ready to go. Uh, which brings me to the, the reason why I actually shot this video is I want to ask you guys a question, get your opinion and uh, see what you think. So. We'll see how many people are still watching this video. Um, I'd like to get your opinion on what I should do with the frames that I take out. Um, I have known for a very, very long time that we should be trying to rotate out our brood frames on a fairly regular basis. Some guys say every three to five years, some guys say every two to three, some guys say every year. Um, and I've tried to do that as much as I can. Um, it's a difficult thing to do. You know, you go through a colony, there's brood in it, there's honey in it. You don't want to take them out. You can put them above or below a queen excluder and let the, the brood emerge out, which is actually a pretty good use for a queen excluder. If you watch my channel, you know I'm not a big fan of queen excluders, but that is a good use for them. Um, and this summer, the reason I'm putting these together is I intend to try and swap out a very large amount at one time. Uh, I've got a little idea hatching in my head. We'll have some videos about that come July. But when you pull these frames out, and, and like I said, I do have quite a few. Whenever, whenever I would have a dead out or whatever, I um, sort through them and, and pick the best ones and keep out in the yard for making splits and nukes like I did uh, 
well, I think second last video I posted, I think I was making splits out of Hive 2. All those frames came out from dead out. So uh, I try and keep the nicest ones and reuse them. The, the ones that are not so nice are in here. And I've got quite a pile of it. There's probably I've got some there and I got a bunch over there. I bet you I got 20, maybe 25 boxes full of this stuff. This one's not too bad, but you know, this one here, the mice got into it and have chewed it all up. So I have that, plus I'm going to end up with an awful pile of it this summer. And I want to try and decide what I'm going to do with it. Um, I, I certainly realized that I could just scrape that all off and then clean them up and away we go. But the reason we're trying, or the reason I'm trying to get these out of the colony is you're, you're trying to reduce the contaminants that are in the wax. The bees are constantly bringing stuff back, whether it's pesticides from agriculture and not just farms, that's residential pesticides as well. People put all kinds of stuff in their flower beds and fruit trees or whatever. And other junk, I've, I've read stuff where bees bring back some of the craziest stuff and it all ends up in the wax, causes problems for the colony. So I want to replace the brood frames. Well, I don't really think I just want to scrape this stuff off because you're not really cleaning it. You're not disinfecting it, I guess. Is where I'm at. So I thought about building some kind of a solar melter. I've seen different pictures. I could put 10, 12 frames in, some kind of a funnel, collect the wax. Uh, whatever I do with it, I'm not going to be reusing the wax for coating my frames. Um, probably going to be making candles or something of it. And I do realize that my wax cappings probably have a small percentage of this problem as well, but at least that wax is only one year old. The frames that are in the brood nest can be multiple years old. I think I think that's where the problem comes from. So I could make a solar thing and melt it off. Um, I don't think there's any issue whatsoever getting it hot enough to melt the wax. But can I get it hot enough to kill these different viruses and spores and pathogens, whatever? And if I do get it that hot, is it going to twist and warp my frame? Plus, solar melter is probably going to be pretty slow. So it's not my number one choice. Next, I thought about building something with hot water. And again, obviously, I melted wax in a pot of hot water right there. I know I can melt it. Um, I could find a bigger spaghetti pot. <laughs> no, we won't be doing that. Uh, but I mean, I can, I can build something that I could dip the, the frame in. Wax is going to melt off. Problem there is all that stuff is going to come to the surface. And then when you lift the frame out, I know that the wax is going to get right back onto the frame, which would save me from doing this job, but that's the wax that I want to get rid of. I have a couple of ideas how I can overcome that, but again, is it going to be hot enough to kill the pathogens? And I could put some Javix in there. I've thought about that. And then, of course, after the fact, you'd have to rinse them to get the Javix off, because I don't want to put that in the hive. Um, but whatever temperatures I'm reaching there, do they warp the frame? Um, last option, and certainly not my preferred option. I can throw them in a bonfire and burn them. When you when you buy frames in quantity, I don't think that they're all that expensive. There's no recycling symbols on them. Um, where I am, there is very little recycling available and I know I can't recycle those. So I can burn them or I can throw them in the landfill. Neither of those two options are, are really what I would like to do. I would like to try and clean them, but I want to, if I'm going to do it, I want to disinfect them so that they're back to brand new when I go put them back in. So, having said all that, I would certainly appreciate to hear your thoughts. If any of you have ever done these types of things that I'm talking about, and perhaps there's something else that I haven't thought of, that's why I'm asking you. Please, I'd appreciate you. Share your thoughts. Give me some ideas. Give me some feedback. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll play some more a little later. I'm going to clean this up. I want to build myself a couple more quiet boxes, so I'll maybe have another video, a little woodworking, small little project. Other than that, I think that's it. I certainly do appreciate your time. You guys be good to your bees, and I'm sure it'll be good to you. Talk to you soon.